Those represent a different rhythm. These uh, streams that you see uh, are computational models from the EEG data that show how brain areas are communicating with each other. And within 200 milliseconds, we're doing these processes, these algorithms of Fourier transformation, artifact correction, source localization, Granger causality. This is a multi-team project working with folks at UCSD, uh, the company NVIDIA who builds GPUs to do this very rapid processing. One thing that we do that's unique is that we take all of this data and we bring it into our Unity, into the Unity game engine where we do our 3D game development. And then, as you can see, this is not a, a video, it's a, it's a live interactive. Uh, we can then fly inside it like any other 3D structure. So you have this really sort of unique ability to fly inside the brain. This is flying inside my brain, sort of surreal. Um, more surreal if you do this inside virtual reality. We do have a VR version of this where you can put a cap on with an EEG, interact with the game, and watch your own brain in real time responding. Um, so it's a, it's a beautiful visualization. We spend a lot of time on the aesthetics of it. We want it to capture people's attention. At this point, it's more uh, used for that purpose, although it is a data visualization tool. It won the Dizzy Award last year. It's probably in around seven museums around the world, many documentaries. Uh, but it, our hope and our for its future is that it will become a research and a clinical product on both fronts, the diagnostic and on the therapeutic side. Diagnostically, what would it be like to look at someone's brain in real time while you challenge them to fly into it and focus on areas that are of interest to you? To press some digital graphic VR buttons and bring up pathways, frequencies, connectivity, and then have other controls where you challenge them and push them and see how their brain responds. So we think that's really interesting um, as a diagnostic tool, and we're going to pursue that. What we're looking at right now, however, is taking this data in real time and feeding it into our video game algorithms, our adaptive algorithms. So right now, all of our games work by recording your performance in real time and then scaling the challenge appropriate to how your brain works. As you get better, the games get harder and harder, constantly pushing you to the next level. We now have a game, a physical fitness game, that records your heart rate in real time. We feed that into the game engine so that we can hold your heart rate, not just your cognitive challenge, right at the level that we want to push you. And so we do a VO2 max beforehand so we can target your physical fitness goals in real time as they change. Our projects on the glass brain now involve taking EEG data and bring that into the game. So essentially, our cognitive challenge video games will understand not just your performance, but how your brain is functioning at a very sensitive level, and then direct the game engine, its adaptivity and its feedback, to target those very processing abilities. We think of it like a gamma knife, where we could focus the engine on an aspect of how your brain is functioning to fine tune it. And this is what we think the combination of this technology with custom built video games that are targeting known deficits in populations will be the future of medicine and at least play a big role in complementing our current system of using small molecules where we don't have anything near this type of precision.